Now, the Fitz School of Governance is hosting world-renowned political philosopher Professor Francis Fukuyama. Fukuyama is a senior fellow at the Freeman uh, Spogli Institute for International Studies at Standard University. He is focused to the past 10 years of his career on studying the history of a political organization in societies across the world and has also strong views on how a modern state should work and how governance serves as a game changer. In delivering on equitable uh, goals within societies, of course. Now, our business anchor, Nompumalelo Siziba, is uh, standing by with the professor as we speak. Uh, Nompu? Thanks very much, Peter, for that. Yes, as you say, I'm with the professor and uh, he's going to be delivering the key lecture here at WITS a little bit later, but we'll get straight into it. Thank you very much for joining us, professor. So... When you look at the African continent um, since the time of independence of the various nations, how do you view the political state of the African continent and how it's now translated into the economic fortunes or not so fortunes mm -hmm. of the countries? Well, I think institutions have developed. There's a lot of democratization all the way back in the 1990s, including here in South Africa. Uh, I think that governance has been slowly improving, but as a result of the big commodity boom, you know, a lot of African countries have actually grown uh, over the last 15 uh, years or so, and that's really important. There's a new middle class in Africa, and I think in the end that will have a transformative effect in, in the fortunes of, of, of the continent. Why do you think it is that perhaps um, African countries have not been able to leverage their natural resource endowment um, to the same degree that other countries that don't have any resources mm -hmm. have been able to? Well, I think it's all a question of governance. I think uh, if you have natural resources, a lot of times that actually simply feeds corruption. And there are some pretty notorious cases of that in resource-rich countries here in, uh, in Africa. Uh, and so unless you have strong institutions that can resist that sort of corruption, the resources may actually be a liability. So you've described the modern state as a state that is able to deliver public goods and services to its citizens. Um, and on the African continent, you know, there are varying levels of development that we can see in South Africa or South Africa is described as the most advanced um, nation or economy on the continent. Why do you think it is that um, African nations, what has been the impediment uh, to be able to grow and develop their economies? Well, I think uh, having a capable modern state is really a function of human resources. And Africa, you know, I think that's probably the single greatest need is to produce educated people that you know will go into leadership positions and I think it's been happening but uh, it's a it's a very slow uh, it's a very slow process uh, and I think it's also kind of a matter of luck whether you have a visionary leader or whether you have a corrupt one mm, indeed so political will um, is the name of the game then in terms of translating our fortunes on the continent well I think you both need you know, you need a society, you need a civil society that pushes from the bottom, that demands accountability and good government, but you also need people from the top that, that have the right morals and, and, and a vision for how the society ought to develop. Mm. In the South African context, we've had this phenomenon of uh, state capture where an influential few people have managed to indirectly run the affairs of state uh, and benefit you know, largely for themselves uh, to the detriment of broader society. And uh, we're seeing these impacts in terms of uh, our energy crisis and so on, where resources that, are sh should, that should have been better used um, were basically wasted. Um, Whilst we are going through the state capture inquiry process, which may well be cathartic for the nation, what is it that, that you think that we need to do in South Africa to ensure that that situation never arises again? Well, I think you need some institutional changes. For example, a lot of the corruption came about through public procurement, uh, and that process, I think, still remains very non-transparent. And there are ways that you can make it much more open so that if stealing is happening, uh, people can be aware of it and they can do something about that. I think that's the way a lot of other countries dealing with uh, corruption problems have, have tried to solve it. In the advancement of nations, how pivotal um, or important is the rule of law and its, its, you know, the strict application of it, regardless mm -hmm. of who you are in society? Well, that's the, that's the key. 
rule of law is not rule of law if it doesn't apply to the most powerful people uh, in the country. Uh, it shouldn't just be the instrument of a dictatorship that tells other people how to act. Uh, and that's very hard because you need an independent judiciary that's not under the control uh, of the power elite that's running the country. And that's uh, an institutional setup that I think South Africa has to a much greater degree than uh, many, most other countries uh, in Africa. Right. And it's something very valuable that, that you need to preserve. You know, one of the things that the African continent is seeking to strive at um, is greater intra-regional trade. Um, you know, a lot of infrastructure needs to be built between Cape and, and Cairo. What sort of elements do you think need to be in play for us to actually achieve those objectives? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the obstacles are first physical, so you need the railroads and the airlines and that sort of thing, but a lot of them are man-made. I mean, there are different regulatory regimes, there's different governance schemes, there's tariffs, there's all sorts of obstructions to the free flow of goods and services across international borders, and that's something that can be fixed by governments, but it does require negotiation, trade pacts, larger regional organizations that will promote that that kind of uh, interaction. Mm. And it's something that obviously um, we're quite keen to strive to, to achieve because for a long time I think there's been a lot of dependence on um, countries and continents further afield. That's right. Um, and so therefore that would be a good thing. But at a global level, um, there seems to be a rise in nationalism, populism as well, and you've got the likes of US President Donald Trump talking about America first. You've got the Brexit situation, depending on how you perceive it, maybe right or wrong. Um, you know, people beginning to look inward. So as people begin to look inward, where does that then leave developing nations like South Africa? Uh, because presumably multilateralism is the best way forward for all of us to grow. Well, you know, as, America, as an American, I'm really disappointed that we pulled out of the Paris Climate Accords and that we seem to be interested in, not really interested in a system of free trade and supporting those institutions that, uh, that produce it. Uh, but I wouldn't give up hope because I think, you know, President Trump is not all that popular in the United States and he may not be around forever. And I think uh, countries, you know, the rich countries have to live up to their uh, responsibilities in organizing a world order. And then before I let you go, Professor, you're going to be delivering a lecture here. What's the thrust of your lecture to uh, the audience this evening? Well, it's really about how the state is necessary uh, for economic growth and development, but also how the state can get in the way of that and what's the way forward uh, in terms of promoting growth. Because if you don't have growth, uh, you don't have development and, and you don't have a happy society. And just very quickly, just itemize a few items that you think are key. You've spoken about strong institutions. Well, I think the fight against corruption has been one of the central issues in many countries, especially in Africa. And I think you need you know, structures that, that guard against that kind of corruption, that punish wrongdoers and, and so forth. And so I think that's one of the main emphases. Okay, super. Thank you very much, Professor, and all the very best with your lecture this evening. No doubt it will go swimmingly. Uh, well, that's, that, that's all... That's all that we have for you here at Witze University um, at the School of Governance. And I was speaking to Professor Francis uh, Fukuyama. Uh, we're going to go for a break and we'll be back to Peter and Vanessa.